parents, just a quick note, two things. One, if you want to turn today's storytime video into a homeschooling English language arts video, check in the description box below and you will see a link to printable PDF worksheets. Two, if you are interested in starting your homeschooling journey, but you don't know where to start and you work full time, I've got you covered. Check out my latest book, Indoctrination or Education, Six Action Steps to Successfully Transition Your Child from Public School to Homeschool. Enjoy the show. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Authorized. My name is Christina Nicole Smith, and today's storytime book is Masterman, A Tall Tale of Nigeria, told by Aaron Shepard and illustrated by David Wisniewski. Masterman. <laughs> this is going to be a good one. Once there was a man who was strong. When he gathered firewood, he hauled twice as much as anyone else in the village. When he hunted, he carried home two antelopes at once. This man's name was Shadusa, and his wife was named Shatu. One day he said to her, just look at these muscles. I must be the strongest man in the world. From now on, just call me Master Man. But Shetu said, quit your foolish boasting. No matter how strong you are, there will always be someone stronger. And watch out, or someday you may meet him. The next day, Shetu paid a visit to a neighboring village. On the walk home, she grew thirsty, so she stopped by a well. She threw in the bucket. Then she pulled on the rope. But though she tugged and she heaved, she could not lift the bucket. Just then, a woman walked up with a baby strapped to her back. Balanced on her head was a calabash, a hollow gourd for carrying water. Shetu said, You'll get no water here today. The bucket won't come up. The two women pulled together, but still the bucket would not budge. Wait a moment, said the woman. She untied her baby and set him on the ground. Pull up the bucket for mama. The baby quickly pulled up the bucket and filled his mother's calabash. Then she, then he threw in the bucket and pulled it up once more for Chateau. Chateau gasped. <gasps> I don't believe it. Oh, it's not so strange, said the woman. After all, my husband is master man. When Chetou got home, she told Shadusa what had happened. Master man, yelled Shadusa. He can't call himself that. I'm master man. I'll have to teach that fellow a lesson. Oh, husband, don't, pleaded Chetou. If the baby is so strong, think what the father must be like. You'll get yourself killed. We'll see about that, said Shadusa. The next morning, Shadusa set out early and walked till he came to the well. He threw in the bucket. Then he pulled on, he pulled on the rope. But though he tugged and <sighs> heaved, he could not lift the bucket. Just then, the woman with the baby walked up. Shadusa said, Wait a minute, what do you think you're doing? I'm getting water, of course, answered the woman. Well, you can't, the bucket won't come up. The woman set down the baby, who quickly pulled up the bucket and filled his mother's calabash. What? yelled Shadusa. How did you do that? It's easy when your father is master man. Shadusa gulped and thought about going home. But instead he thrust out his chest and said, I want to meet this fellow so I can show him who's the real master man. Oh, I wouldn't do that, said the woman. He devours men like you, but suit yourself. So Shadusa followed the woman back to her compound. 
Inside the fenced yard was a gigantic fireplace and beside it was a huge pile of bones. Oh, what's all this? Asked Shadusa. Well, you see, our hut is so small that my husband must come out here to eat his elephants. Just then, they heard a great <laughs> roar. So loud that Shadusa had to cover his ears. Then the ground began to shake until Shadusa could hardly stand. What's that? He shouted. The woman said, that's Master Man. Oh no, wailed Shadusa. You weren't fooling. I've got to get out of here. It's too late now, said the woman, but let me hide you. By the fence were some large clay pots, each as tall as a man for storing grain. She helped him climb into one, then set the lid in place. Shadusa raised the lid a crack to peek out. And there, coming into the compound, was Master Man, carrying a dead elephant across his shoulders. The woman asked, did you have a good day, dear? Yes, bellowed Master Man, but I forgot my bow and arrows. I had to kill this elephant with my bare hands. As Shadusa watched in terror, Master Man built a huge fire in the fireplace, roasted the elephant, and devoured every bit of it but the bones. Suddenly he stopped and sniffed. Wife, I smell a man. Oh, there's no man here now, said the woman. One passed by while you were gone. That must be what you smell. Too bad, thundered Master Man. He would have been tasty. Then he rolled over on the ground and before long the leaves trembled from his snores. The woman hurried over to the pot and slid off the lid. Quick, she said, get away while you can. Shadusa leaped out and bolted down the path. But he hadn't gone too far when he heard a distant roar and felt the ground tremble beneath him. Master Man was coming. Shadusa ran till he came upon five farmers hoeing a field. One called, what's your hurry? Master man is after me. Take it easy, said the farmer. We won't let anyone hurt you. Just then they heard a terrible <gasps> The farmers all dropped their hose and covered their ears. The farmer asked, what was that? That was master man. Well then, said the farmer, you better keep running. And the five farmers fled across the field. Shadusa ran on till he met 10 porters carrying bundles. One called, what's your hurry? Master man is after me. The porter said, relax, no one can fight all of us. Just then the ground quaked and they all bounced into the air. The porters fell in a heap all mixed up with their bundles. The porter asked, what was that? That was Master Man. Then run for your life. And the 10 porters bolted from the path. Shadusa ran on till he rounded a bend. Then he stopped short. There beside the path sat a stranger and there beside the stranger lay a huge pile of elephant bones. What's your hurry? Growled the stranger. Master man is after me, moaned Shadusa. You better not say so, cause I'm master man. From behind Shadusa came another roar, and once again he bounced into the air. The stranger caught him in one hand as master man ran up. Let me have him, said master man. Come and get him said the stranger. Master Man lunged, but the stranger tossed Shadusa into a tree. Then the two strong men wrapped themselves around each other and wrestled across the ground. The noise of the battle nearly deafened Shadusa. The dust choked him. The trembling of the tree nearly shook him down. 
As Shadusa watched, the two men struggled to their feet, still clutching each other. Then each gave a mighty leap, and together they rose into the air. Higher and higher they went, till they passed through a cloud and out of sight. Shadusa waited and waited, but the men never came back down. At last, he climbed carefully from the tree, then ran and ran and never stopped till he got home safe and sound. And he never called himself Master Man again. As for those other two, they're still in the clouds where they battle on to this day. Of course, they rest whenever they're both worn out, but sooner or later, they start up again and what a noise they make. Some people call that noise thunder. But now you know what it really is. Two fools fighting forever to see which one is Master Man. The end. Okay, and now I just want to share some fun, interesting information about this tall tale. Master Man is a tale of the Hausa, the largest ethnic group of northern Nigeria. The Hausa live mainly on the savanna, which is grassland with scattered trees, and that's in Nigeria's northwest quarter. Through most Hausa, uh, excuse me, though most Hausa live in rural villages, as portrayed in the story, the larger Hausa towns have possessed a sophisticated culture since long before European colonization. As traders, the Hausa have for centuries maintained economic and cultural contacts throughout West Africa, and um, their adoption of Islam led to um, the Hausa writing their literature down. And tall tales about fighting he-men such as this are popular among the Hausa. So isn't that interesting? And Hausa is spelled H-A-U-S-A. -A. So, um, you know, I always have the question that I always have, which is, what do you think the moral of the story was? I think I know. But I'm going to let you answer that question. And I'll see you next time on Authorized.